EV itself actually will not solve the problem. Electrification cannot, only electrification cannot. It, let us, it can get, get us far, but it cannot get us to 90% reduction that we need to meet 1.5 degree goal. We, don't, if we have to fundamentally shift how we move, how we, how we move around in our cities, in our countries. Transport must be at the heart of our efforts to build a cleaner, safer world. We are living in a world where transport actually still leaves many people behind and many people underserved. So it's not just, you know, moving from private cars to, to bicycle, but what I think is important, again, is to uh, put public transportation and non-motorized uh, transportation in a whole system where you can move from the north part, the south part of the city, west or east, uh, in a way that it's uh, rapidly than when you use the private car and also uh, more secure. So two wheelers, three wheelers, four wheelers must all go electric in the next four to five years. Five years should be the period of transition to electric vehicle and long distance transportation should, should all move towards green hydrogen. And that is really the key. Egypt, while emitting less than 1% of the global emissions has stepped up to the generational challenge of climate change through bearing the responsibility of hosting COP27, paving the way for the global community to thrive and grow green. We should keep in mind five goals. COVID recovery, economic recovery, climate change, equity, and restoring America's standing in the world. And in the Department of Transportation, we do that with safety as our guiding star. Innovation has to be applied. It's not innovation if it's not. And so that's the, the key aspect of this. There'll be failures, there'll be successes, but most importantly, there'll be learning as we go along on this process. Uh, the investment in this decarbonization of the transport sector in Costa Rica can generate a benefit of 43 billion in benefits by 2050, uh, almost doubling the estimated cost of, of what is the investments that were required. The mindset has changed. There's leadership and commitment there. Um, and uh, recognizing that if we don't address climate change, it will affect our growth, it will affect our development, it will affect our productivity. As the climate crisis continues to unfold and make worse by unsustainable transportation systems, we feel strongly that our focus should be less on issuing declarations and more on taking action to mitigate and adapt to the effects of this crisis. We always have to remember that in developing countries, there is still a lot of infrastructure investment that needs to be done, especially in retrofitting existing uh, transportation systems to make them more compatible for, with low carbon mobility. There is a choice that we can make. And if we really actively push for a, a sense of mobility that will actually be accessible to all people, we make such a difference. We make a difference in terms of equity. We make, make a difference in terms of climate. We can make a difference in terms of road safety. It's not normal that so many people die in traffic. Design of the investments is going to define where this world is going in terms of transportation.